Gamer Reborn by Kaleros Lit RPG Reincarnation Antihero Lead Male Lead Adventure Magic. Warning This fiction contains graphic violence, profanity, sensitive content, sexual content. Ajax used to coast through life before his parents died. After that he focused hard to try get his life back on track but that wasn't really happening and it all ended the day he got mugged. Given a second chance at life he now looks to become someone who matters and is willing to work hard from the beginning to make that happen. Prologue I woke up at 5 a.m. on a Saturday morning, drenched in cold sweat. I don't even remember the dream I had. All I know is that it went south real quick and that I woke up right as it did. Knowing that I couldn't get back to sleep I dragged myself out of bed and headed for the shower. I just stood there for a few minutes letting the warm water cascade over me in an effort to gather some energy before I got on with all that I had planned for the day. As I grabbed my morning cup of coffee I sat down at the table and started to look through all the letters that came in yesterday and oddly enough not a single one was bearing any bad news. While this may sound weird to some that looking through letters for bad news and not finding any being a surprise let me explain. Ever since I can remember every night I had a nightmare there was something the day that went really bad or was supposed to go really bad for me. I somewhat started putting it together in middle school, seeing as after every bad dream there was a surprise test that I was not prepared for. That's not to say that I had a bad dream before every surprise test. It was just those that I had not studied for. By third grade I learned to trust my gut a bit and sometimes took sick days after bad dreams and lo and behold I was missing out on some surprise tests. When I told my parents, bragging about my so-called powers, sue me I was eight. All they told me was that it was a coincidence and I mostly agreed with them and tried not to put too much faith in it. I still did last minute cramming and hid cheat sheets after every dream because why tempt fate, but it was all superstitious and not something I took seriously. That is until the day in my senior year of high school when I had the worst one yet. I woke up with a headache and it just wouldn't go away. The weird thing was that it happened on a Sunday and I thought I had nothing to worry about. That was true until I heard the door bell at 7 p.m. and opened the door to two police officers that informed me my parents were in a car crash with a drunk driver and they didn't make it. They had been in a crash with the son of some important politician in the local community who managed to pull some string to get him off with just probation. As I ransacked the letters and found nothing in there I relaxed a bit, at least I wasn't getting evicted. So instead I went to my PC and started looking through emails, maybe there was a clue in there about how my day could take a turn for the worse, and there it was an email from my boss telling me that they no longer needed my services and that I was being let go. The jewelry store I had worked at for the past 4 years just fired me out of the blue, well I say that, but I suspect it had something to do with an argument I heard last week between the boss and his wife. Now it wasn't an all-out yelling match and I only picked up a few words outside the room but it was enough for me to figure out what had happened with today's email. She had come to ask her husband to do a favor for her sister. I picked up something about a nephew needing a job from her side and something about a lazy good-for-nothing from him but I guess nepotism still wins out in the end. After I learned just how unfair the world was I started to just focus on becoming someone who couldn't be just swept under the rug. I focused a lot on my studies and got into a college to study architecture with a partial scholarship and used all my free time studying or playing video games. They were the only outlet where I could enjoyably interact with strangers without spending the first few hours being an awkward introvert. It was also what I had planned on doing for the rest of the day to blow off some steam. I was pretty upset about losing the job, but I was two months away from finishing college and having to look for a better job anyway. So I was mostly just upset at why I got fired more than the fact that I got canned. After a full day of bad luck playing online I decided it would be fine to just go out to a bar and handle my anger by jumping in the bottle, since I was free tomorrow anyway. I was tripping my way back home, after running out of cash drinking cheap vodka at the bar, when all of a sudden an angry voice started yelling at me. Give me all the cash you got. I felt a strong grip drag me into an alley and I felt the barrel of a gun pressed to my head. With a small chuckle my inebriate itself decided that the best response was thanks for helping me look. The barkeep told me I was out. 
Clearly that was not the answer the mugger was looking for as next thing I know I feel a fist hitting me in the jaw. The mugger then grabs a hold of my wrist and tries to wrench the watch off. Drunk as I am, I lose my balance and go tumbling over. I fall right on top of him and the next thing I know I hear a bang. As I am floating in that darkness I see my whole life flash before me over and over again. It was then that I realized that the poor needed to work hard from the very beginning if they were to ever have a chance at making something of themselves. My early happy years with my family were the only memories I did not regret though looking back I was disappointed in myself. I had been so carefree back then doing nothing but messing around playing video games. The only productive part of my whole childhood had been learning to speak and write Chinese, and even that I had done just to placate my mom who insisted I learn a second language, so I picked the first one I could find that nobody around me would understand. After the accident as I decided to get my life on track, I had barely a few months in which, through a lot of hard work, I managed to get my partial scholarship. This lead me to neglecting everything else like my diet and exercise. That then lead me to gaining weight and having a poor social life through my college years with barely a few one-night stands in the parties after end-of-term exams, comprising my social life as the job working to pay the rest of my tuition and housing drained me of all my energy, to finally getting killed in the back of an alley one night. I had lost track of how many times I went through the loop while I was floating in the void when I heard the words, What do we have here, a mortal soul traveling through the void? I wonder how you managed not to get pulled back into the river of rebirth. I could hand you over to be put where you belong but I so despise contacting death. May as well let you there all on your own the normal way. As the last word ended I felt like I was spinning no longer knowing which way is up and then I lost whatever consciousness I had had in the void. Chapter 1 I woke up to being surrounded on all sides by what I thought were giants. As the bright light and loud sounds confused me I felt myself being picked up and lowered into water then being tightly wrapped up in something as I was passed from one giant to another. This one just held me to her chest and smiled at me. I had tried moving but found I had no strength being wrapped up as I was, I had tried talking but only weird cries came out from my mouth. Through it all the woman holding me was heaving in deep breaths but seemed happy. As I continued to struggle and shriek I felt myself getting more and more sleepy until I just blacked out. It had taken me two weeks of doubting my own sanity to come to two conclusions. One that I had been reborn. And let me tell you this is the one I think has a lower chance of being what happened. And the other that the shot I took to the head had not killed me but left me mentally insane. But I decided that since there was nothing I could do about the second choice I might as well go with the first and treat this as me actually being reborn. The first thing I realized about being reborn is that all of the stories you read about it happening put one hell of a good spin on being a baby. Being unable to move on your own, lift your own head or control your bowels is something I was happy about not remembering my first time around going through all this. All the previous knowledge and understanding I had did not help me with the instinctual need for food or suppressing the instinct to ask for that food by straining my vocal cords to the limit. The only issues with my methods being that they were identical to the ones for asking to get changed from sitting in my own filth. Luckily enough my mother seemed pretty adept at telling the difference between the two quickly and has always handled it efficiently. It has been around a month now since my birth and I was starting to get an understanding of the consistency of my new family. In this world I was not an only child, far from it in fact as it seemed that besides my parents I also had an older brother who looked to be about 14, and an older sister aged about 7. Without understanding the language however everything I heard seemed to go in one ear and out the other. The best I could figure out my brother's name was Tom and my sister's Judy. As for my parents from the similar forms of address I was guessing they were calling my parents different words for mom and dad and hadn't been yet able to figure out their names. Having to take 12 naps a day as well as everyone always baby speaking to me made it hard to try and pick up the language but I figured out mom and dad in another day and had wanted to try to surprise them by speaking. My plans all went out the window however when I figured out that for that my vocal cords were working and I could scream for all I was worth, my new body's tongue and lips didn't have the muscle memory in order to create the sounds I wanted. That night as I was trying to figure out how to speak everything changed, 
I was staring blankly in concentration at the wall of my crib when in front of my eyes a block of text appeared. Status. Name. Ajax. Level. 1. Experience. 0. 100. Traits. Child. Divine witness. Health. 2020. Mana. 7070. Stamina. 5 tenths. Vitality. 2. Strength. 1. Endurance. 1. Dexterity. 1. Intellect. 25. Wisdom. 16. Mind. 7. Perception. 4. Stat points. 0. Skills. Nothing made sense. It wasn't that I didn't know what this was. I had read enough stories that I had tried in those first two weeks for more hours than I am comfortable admitting to try to bring up something like this but nothing worked yet now it pops up out of nowhere for no discernible reason in the middle of the night. The fright sends my infant instincts into overdrive and I start bawling my eyes out. It takes seconds for my mother to come into the room, disheveled as if she had just woken up, and check if I am hungry or in need of changing. When she reasons that I am not in need of food or a new cloth diaper she starts to worry, I next see my dad coming into the room sleepily rubbing his eyes as he listens to the worried torrent of words coming from my mother only to say a soft calm reply. As soon as he finished his words my mom get a look of realization on her face after which she calms down and puts sways me to sleep. Naturally I try to resist. After she successfully calmed me down I try to figure out what happened and what is this status. Unfortunately my past few hours of learning to speak combined with the drowsiness from calming down from a tantrum lets her gently put me to sleep without me figuring anything else out. Sylvia POV, the sound of Ajax crying woke me up, looking out the window lets me see it must be the middle of the night, and I slowly get out of bed and walk over to the baby room next door. Thomas and Judy are managing to sleep on the other side of the house so I hurry to quiet him down before he wakes them up. I reach in the crib and lift him up to check if he needs to be changed but that doesn't seem to be the issue. Afterwards I try to feed him but it seems that he isn't hungry either. It's at this point that I start to get worried. Yes babies are known to cry for no reasons but this is the first time Ajax has done so. I don't know what's happened. He's not hungry and he's clean. He just won't stop crying. I worriedly tell Sam as I see him enter the room. He looks at me with tired eyes and seems to think for a moment then calmly responds. It's the first day of summer. His status must have just unlocked and it scared him. Hearing the logical reason I realize that yes it does make sense. Being awake at all hours to feed the baby I had lost track of days and didn't notice that today was the first day of summer. I instantly relaxed and started to calm Ajax down then put him to sleep. Chapter 2 I wake up to a few rays of sun getting through the window and try to twist my head to get the light out of my eyes when I remember the scene last night and I'm instantly awake. I tentatively try to pull up my status and sure enough the same thing as last night appears. Status. Name. Ajax. Level. 1. Experience. 0. 100. Traits. Child. Divine Witness. Health. 2020. Mana. 7070. Stamina. 10 tenths. Vitality. 2. Strength. 1. Endurance. 1. Dexterity. 1. Intellect. 25. Wisdom. 16. Mind. 7. Perception. 4. Stat points. 0. Skills. As well as something I didn't see last night. In the small bottom left of my vision is a small blinking dot. I focus on it to see what it may mean and am presented with a message. Trait warning of misfortune found. Trait affects future sight. Future sight is not the domain of mortals. Trait forcibly removed. Removed trait has left a hole. Survival without a trait is impossible. New trait granted by at hash dollar percent carrot. Trait divine witness gained. I try to think close and the message disappears. I also try bringing it up again and find I can't do it. This leads me to the decision that all actions on my status are permanent. Next I focus on the trait child and a new message is presented to me. Child. Temporary trait. Status points cannot be allocated. Incremental increase of all stat points by 10 throughout the duration. Stat points do not affect aging. Gaining skills grants experience. Leveling skills grants experience. Crafting experience gain stopped. Killing experience gain stopped. Upon expiration or removal trait apprentice is gained for half the duration child has persisted. Time remaining. 150 cycles. Closing that. 
I focus on my other trait, divine witness, permanent trait, affinity with all skills greatly increased, ease of leveling skills increased, ease of forcibly gaining stat points slightly increased, stat points gained per level increased by 2, skill level limits increased by 50. This trait cannot be forcibly revealed, I then try to focus on health but nothing happens, that seems to be the case for all of my other stats, they come with no explanation, not that I don't find them self-explanatory, with that out of the way I read through my two traits and focus on one part that bothers me when compared to all the games I have ever played, ease of forcibly gaining stat points slightly increased. I try to figure out what that could mean and my status changes in front of my eyes, status, name, Ajax, level, 1, experience, 0 100, traits, child, divine witness, health, 20 20, mana, 70 70, stamina, 10 tenths, vitality, 2.00, strength, 1.00, endurance, 1.01, dexterity, 1.00, intellect, 25.00, wisdom, 16.00, mind, 7.00, perception, 4.00, stat points, 0, skills, ah, I see, so increases and in stat points don't count until they reach a full point but their progress can be tracked, which leads me to my next question, what did I do to increase my endurance? The only thing that stands out to me is that my stamina went from 5 tenths to 10 tenths, so simply using and regenerating stamina increases my endurance, that doesn't seem all that bad, reasoning that there is nothing else I can do I start struggling and flexing my legs and arms hoping that by doing so I will not only strengthen my muscles to the point that I can crawl so that I have some mobility but that I also use up some of my stamina. Sure enough 20 minutes later I am at 1 stamina and too tired to move anymore but my mind is still wide awake and alert, so I do the only thing that seems to make sense try to focus on myself so that I can feel for my mana, after all if spending and regaining stamina gains endurance similarly spending and regenerating mana must increase a stat as well. 2 hours later I finally feel a strange energy inside of myself and am jilted out of my concentration. Pulling out my stats now gives me something different. Status, name, Ajax, level, 2, experience, 5200, traits, child, divine witness, health, 2020, mana, 7070, stamina, 2 tenths, vitality, 2.00, strength, 1.00, endurance, 1.01, dexterity, 1.00, intellect. 25.00, Wisdom, 16.00, Mind, 7.00, Perception, 4.00, Stat Points, 22, Skills, Meditation LVL2 Sense Mana LVL1, The thing I notice is that I no longer need to focus to sense the mana inside of me, I then try using the mana for something but that is where I get stumped. It goes to reason that for something to regenerate it must be used up first but other than feeling my mana I don't seem to be able to do anything with it. It takes 5 minutes of exertion to finally get my mana to release from me and am prompted that I have now gained the skill, Mana Expulsion LVL1. Sadly my focus on releasing mana also helped me release something else, fuck it. If that's what it takes that's what it takes, so with my victory of having learned how to sense and reduce my mana being left with only 1070 I give the house the morning wake up cry that I have soiled myself again, all the while thinking that after all my hard work I could go for a meal. Chapter 3, it has been 7 cycles since I gained my status, at least according to my child trait and I have found out that each cycle has 36 days, in this time life seems to have gone on all around me. My mastery of the local language has been increasing and I have learned that my parents are called Sam and Sylvia, that my older brother is very interested in me for some reason while my sister seems to just be following him around all day. My mother seems to be a seamstress and my father a blacksmith, but on to more important news it was just yesterday that I had found enough power to crawl, it has been a worthwhile achievement and I am looking forward to exploring my new home. Being satisfied with myself I pull up my status screen to see my improvement, name, Ajax, level, 5, experience, 
15,150,800, 100, traits, child, divine witness, health, 2020, mana, 1580, stamina, 530, vitality, 2.53, strength, 2.08, endurance, 3.02, dexterity, 1.79, intellect, 26.03, wisdom, 18.07, mind, 8.76, perception, 4.50, stat points, 88, skills, meditation LVL 9 sense mana LVL 7 expel mana LVL 6 mathematics LVL 3. Of all that I have figured out in these months is that first of all stats get harder to increase as points go up. Edurance having increased to 3 from constant workout but mind only to 8.76 despite working for longer. That vitality is extremely hard to level and that the points from my child trade seem to be gradually given through a drip feed having given half a point in all my stats in about half 7 and a half cycles out of 150. Other news I have found out is that this world also has days of 24 hours, so there is a small victory in that and that their seasons also last 3 months or cycles as they are called here, besides the longer months though the big difference comes from this world having five seasons besides the usual of spring summer fall and winter they also seem to have the season called dollar hash percent, it is not a word I have learned yet but it does seem to be a word also used for something else as I have heard it in another context. One of the things I did figure out is that this world named its seasons after its gods and that each season is named after the god that is said to be empowered at that time, which makes sense seeing as I was born in spring and he is also the god that gave me my other trait, meaning that the scrambled letters in my other trait mean spring. The language looks so weird written down that I dread having to learn how to write it, but if I learnt anything in my last life it's that putting in the work early and not taking shortcuts is the way to the top. So my foreseeable future seems to be crawling and exercising my muscles learning the language and spending my mana. It has now been 32 cycles since my rebirth and a lot has changed. I can fully understand the language and am capable of speaking, though I refrain from making any really intelligent sentences and am trying to seem like the usual 3 year old, or I guess 2 year old as in this world the years are longer. That's going to take some getting used to though at least now it makes sense why the child trade disappears at 150 cycles, it's when I would be 10 years old. Tom is approaching that age himself and will be 10 as the next cycle hits, that's another weird thing about this world as the trade changes only happen on the first day of every season everyone's age and birthday is counted on only on that day, meaning there are only 5 days a year where anyone's birthday is celebrated. That's not to say that the population birthdays are equally split among the five dates. Based on my experiences in these past years I seem to be in a medieval world somewhere around the year 1000, but then again I was getting an engineering degree not a history one so I could be off by quite a bit. Suffice it to say that there is not much technology around here. The fifth season that is between fall and winter is death. Yeah surprised me too, but I found out pretty quickly as to why that is. See here winters are only slightly colder than fall, just enough to turn the rainy fall season into the snowy winter season. During death however the temperature drops drastically and winds are constantly howling, though there is no precipitation, thank god it would be hail. So what are people to do for entertainment for 3 months mostly spent inside to hide away from the cold? Given what I've overheard trying to meditate and expel mana at night. My parents are trying really hard to get me a younger sibling to add to the two older ones I already have. My stat increases have been getting better, and despite my brother's attempts to keep me confined to his care I have made some progress exploring the house. This let me find out that my father seems to be a blacksmith and that my mother seems to be a merchant and housewife on the side. He creates while she sells and takes care of everything else. After almost 33 cycles of training my skills and stats have improved considerably. Name, Ajax. Level, 7. Experience, 1652100. Traits, Child, Divine Witness. Health, 4040. Mana, 75150. Stamina, 53100. Vitality, 4.09. Strength. 7.53, Endurance, 10.60, Dexterity, 7.14, Intellect, 
29.35, Wisdom, 21.63, Mind, 15.54, Perception, 6.24, Stat Points, 132, Skills, Meditation LVL 24 Sense Mana LVL 22 Expel Mana LVL 21 Mathematics LVL 15 Stealth LVL 5 Drawing LVL 8 Athleticism LVL 2 The difficulty of gaining stats forcibly seems to be getting harder doing the same things over and over, but at least with my newfound mobility I was able to finally gain some extra points in perception though gaining them by having my nose assaulted when I found the outhouse is not my most pleasant memory. Increasing my vitality seems to be an exercise in futility as my only increase outside of the child trade is 0.09 so I am guessing I'll have to ask my parents about that once I grow a bit older and it would be acceptable for my age to ask questions about stats and skills. What I am looking forward to next is my brother's 10th birthday coming tomorrow as I will be there to see what happens when the child trait becomes apprentice. For all my complaining about him and the fact that I developed the stealth skill so I can escape him and explore something outside my room I am finding myself thinking of these people as my family more and more as time passes, and I am not sure if those are my genuine feelings on the matter or if I my thinking is affected by my child body. Chapter 4, I woke up early as I usually do and spent the next few minutes emptying out my mana pool before going doing the same to half my stamina and then continuing to make progress on my next big challenge, walking. It's far too often that I find just how many things I had taken for granted in my past life at the age of 24, but not having the muscle memory to walk makes learning to walk similar to walking drunk out of your mind without the added inebriation stopping you from noticing you just about kiss the floor every few steps. My frustrating exercises come to a close as my mother comes to get me ready telling me that my brother has left home and that we and by we I mean her while I am put somewhere in her line of sight, can begin preparing for the party we are having for him tonight. As I am sat at the table working on my drawing as I found that to be the best way to get my dexterity to increase and regain a few of my skills in design I start to smell the food cooking not 5 feet from me and it smells better than anything else I have had in the past 3 years. What's that? I ask trying as hard as I can to be cute in the hopes that she will answer me in detail instead of the bland answer just food, it smells so good, that is meat from the monster that was LVL20 according to the merchant I bought it from, my mother answers like it's nothing, mm monster, I ask freaking out on the inside that there are monsters in this world, forgetting entirely that a polar bear would have been a monster to people during the middle ages. Yes silly. Unlike humans all animals that level past level 19 gain access to mana and start to form a mana core inside them. That mana circulating their body makes them stronger and in most cases taste much better and be more nutritious. My sister actually answers me, with a tone of voice that makes it clear that she had asked the same question before mother got me from my room and probably many others and is now making it seem like she is the sage of all knowledge. This information takes over my mind as I start thinking about all sorts of high-level creatures and how they could evolve like that. With the information of my past life as well as the bounty of fiction I have read in my teens about fantasy stories I start to wonder about what their existence could mean for this world. Are humans not the dominant species on this planet? Does killing them grant a lot of experience? Can they be tamed or are they always aggressive? Can they learn skills just like we can? Wow, that looks really good, Judy exclaims as she is looking at the paper I am drawing on, without realizing it is my mind was wondering about all the possibilities of monsters. The drawings which I had purposely made look like child scribbles before now had started to look a lot more like the designs I was doing for my architecture courses. It's not too much since it started only in the middle of the drawing but enough to get my mother to look over and look at me surprised. Did you get the drawing skill? She kindly asks me, trying to hide her excitement. Drawing but he's only two. I only got that skill last year when I was six. My sister sounds equally impressed and jealous. Why yes. I stutter knowing I might just have blown my cover, that combined with my new knowledge of the existence of monsters is praying that normal kids can gain skills early and this doesn't mark me as a changeling or something to burst at the stake. Congratulations darling, 
you'll do well to level it up as much as you can before you're 15 after that it will stop giving you experience my mother says while not only calming me down about my sudden slip up and also making me wonder what she means only up until I turn 15. My wondering is cut short by my father entering the house and announcing he's on his way, is everything ready? Yes the stew only has a few more minutes until it is ready, did you finish his sword? Yeah it's right here, I hope he'll like it. My brother entered the house to find our family wishing him a happy birthday. He doesn't seem surprised at all, telling me that he knew what our parents were planning but seems very happy regardless of it being a successful surprise or not. After all the well-wishing and idle conversation is over. As my mother is going to set the table my father pulls Tom aside and starts questioning him. So did you make up your mind about what you wanted to do? Yeah, I talked with Vex and he said I can tag along with them to get to Lessis when he leaves. This was all news to me. Where was Lessis? Who is this Vex and why is my brother leaving? As my mind is running 100 miles a minute my dad's next question fills up a few of the holes I had. You're sure you want to be a guard? If you changed your mind about becoming a blacksmith I can train you myself. Yes, dad, I'm sure. We both know I have been helping out and even with you trying to teach me in the past I still don't have any skills for the hammer much less blacksmithing. He says like it was the 50th times they had the same conversation which considering he was planning on leaving the village it probably was. You don't have to worry unless this is less than two weeks travel on a merchant caravan it's not like I'm planning on going to the capital to become a mage. A smirk forming upon his lips as he is looking at my sister who was drawing closer to eavesdrop on the pair. A bit of a sore spot for her as we'd all been made well aware in the past year that while my sister finds magic to be the best thing there is, she has yet to gain any mana skills. Mother says that it's very rare only 1 in 50 people is blessed with mana and that is a skewed statistic as most of them are nobles. The chances of a villager having access to mana is more like 1 in 500. My sister seems upset at hearing that but I figured that both my parents and my brother have been trying to gently let her down, as she only has 3 more years herself before she has to make the choice of what path she wants to travel down. Chapter 5 after dinner my mother picked me up and after clearing the table and we at my dad's request we all sat down around the empty table. Now son I know you made your decision about what you want to do and I respect that however there is one thing that I feel that I must do before you become an apprentice. He says that because in this culture a person becomes an adult only when they no longer have either the child or the apprentice trait. This happens at 15 years old or around 22 to 23 years on earth. That might seem a bit old for a medieval structure that their technology shows but considering that the message on my child trait suggests that after it is over my stats will also affect my aging it doesn't seem that bad. What I am about to do now is something you must never do unless you trust the people around you with your life. I am about to show you my status and try to explain to you my choices. That is all my father said before the block of text became visible about 4 inches in front of his face. Name, Sam Level, 35 Experience, 4,564 thousandth straights. Health, 2,500 2,500. Mana, 250 250. Stamina, 501,200. Vitality, 250. Strength, 250. Endurance, 120. Dexterity, 180. Intellect, 25. Wisdom, 25. Mind, 25. Perception, 45. Stat points, 0. Skills. Hammers LVL 60 Blacksmithing LVL 49 Precise Blow LVL 32 Axes LVL 30 Mining LVL 25 Running LVL 20 Reading LVL 10 Heat Resistance LVL 10 Writing LVL 5 Now I will advise you as my father advised me, despite the fact that you have no mana and that you will most likely never have mana regardless of how much above 11 you intellect wisdom and mind stats are you should probably push them up to 25 as that is where it is believed that the bonus to things like memory enhancement and quick thinking and other such limits are it probably seems like a big investment now and i am not saying that these are your first points to put in just that these are something you are looking to have by the time your apprentice trade ends or a year after 
Everything else I chose has been for the purpose of making me a better blacksmith, the strength and dexterity to work the metal as I wanted as well as enough endurance to last in the forge. That is when my mother took over, my stat points look a bit different. Name, Sylvia Level, 30 Experience, 13,248,000 Traits, Merchant, Health, 3,000 3 thousandths. Mana, 250 250. Stamina, 501,200. Vitality, 300. Strength, 110. Endurance, 110. Dexterity, 110. Intellect, 25. Wisdom, 25. Mind, 25. Perception, 110. Stat points, 0. Skills. Haggling LVL 40 Mathematics LVL 30 Cleaning LVL 28 Cooking LVL 27 Sewing LVL 20 Reading LVL 20 Writing LVL 19 Lower Price LVL 17 Raise Price LVL 16 Good Deal LVL 10 Running LVL 10 Drawing LVL 5 Contracts LVL 3 As you can see without all the need for that much strength and dexterity I mostly focused on my vitality and raised my perception a bit more. As a merchant and someone who grew up in the city, not to mention the work around the house, I picked up a few more skills than your father, however mine are not as connected nor are they as high level. Mother, what does the merchant trait do? My sister asked, seeming very confused that an adult would have a trait. The merchant trait is one that increases my skill level up speed slightly in all merchant skills and also increases the LVL cap on the skills from 100 to 120. If you have a trait then how come we don't? My brother asked, himself seeming surprised at my mother having a trait. That's because for the most part traits are not hereditary my dad told him. Most part? I asked forgetting for a second that this was all supposed to go over my head. They seemed to think I didn't understand the expression instead of questioning his statement. Yes there are traits that are not hereditary, and while traits in and of themselves are rather uncommon there are some traits that can be guaranteed or even earned. For example the knight trait can be earned by anyone who is knighted and increases the limit of all combat weapons skills by 10. Whereas the Noble Baron Duke Archduke and Royal Law increase the limit of all skills by 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 they are however titles that can be lost with the position they represent. My father said, smiling kindly at me, that's not to say they are exclusive, while a person can only have one permanent at a time traits can evolve and evolve to accommodate this. For example should I become a baroness tomorrow my trait will evolve to baron merchant and it will give me a slight increase leveling up merchant skills as well as a 20 increase to the limit of all merchant skills and 10 to the others. So the limit of skills is really 160? My sister said, having lifted her hand up counting on her fingers. No apparently regardless of the trait nothing increases skill limit past 150, and that is known from a few rebellions where the new king had previously had a trait. The limit is still 150 but they do keep their slight increase to leveling ease. The limit of non-nobility traits is also an increase of 50. The difference is that they don't come with an increase to the speed of getting skill levels, and that the higher the increase is the more specific it is. For example a hammer expert would get 10 to all hammer related skills, a blacksmith would gain 20 to blacksmithing and military smith would gain 30 to all weapons and armor smithing skills, while an armor or weapon smith would gain 40. What about the natural 50? Those are extremely rare and too specialized to be as useful, it would be something like a swordsmith. The downside is that while a swordsmith may get blacksmithing to 150 with enough hard work the skill would also get warped by how he leveled it all the way up and be capped at 100 for anything other than swordsmithing. My mother said. That however is only true when it comes to working as a crafter, and even those can find success, it just takes a long time for their specialty to beat out older established crafters, most such people get picked up by a noble family willing to invest in them so that they can get access to 150 skill crafter items. Most of the other specialists often find success but they are always pulled into nobility either by marriage or a work contract. And it's not like there are many of them anyway, 
In our kingdom last I heard there are only four openly known about and maybe three times again that many hidden away so around fifteen in a kingdom's worth of people. My dad patiently explained to my curious sister, it was times like this that I was glad for her inquisitive nature that mirrored my own. So of course I then made the crucial mistake of yawning rather loudly. Mother got up to go and put me to sleep, signaling that this was all the conversation I was going to be listening in on tonight. A rather upsetting juncture since I plan on working on skills as soon as possible. Not in eight years. Chapter 6 The sun had barely started rising. A few rays making it through the window as I finished exhausting my stamina and mana. I crawled out of bed wanting to continue to practice my walking. I had no problem walking for a few weeks now but still had the bad habit of tripping when I picked up the speed even a little and I tried to turn. I would love to practice outside but apparently I wasn't old enough to spend time alone outside. I noticed something strange as I tripped for the third time that day when I caught sight of something being placed on the other side of the wardrobe. I found it odd as the wardrobe was making a small triangle with the corner of the room and it made no sense for something to be in that triangle as it would be hard to reach, but not a great place to hide something as anyone searching for it would find it. A bit of stretching and crawling later I pulled out a potted plant with a small faded X scratched on the pot. I take my time examining it, after all common knowledge says that X marks the spot, and why would anyone put a plant somewhere where there was no light? especially one as green and as vibrant as this one, surely there must be something special about it. Thirty minutes later and I was no closer to figuring out what was so special about this plant when my mother came in to wake me up. It was a bit earlier than usual but today we were sending my brother off to become a guard. Morning Ajax, how are you this morning hey when did you bring in a pot from the garden? I know they aren't that rare but those medicinal plants still sell quite well in this region as they are hard to grow without a lot of care. Taking up the pot in one hand and me in the other she takes me into the kitchen and sets me down at the table with the flower pot by side. My dad and brother were both going through his pack making sure he had everything he needed as my sister was setting the table. She looked especially pleased with herself for helping mother prepare breakfast today. And to be honest she was starting to get the hang of it. I hadn't found any shells in my eggs the last two times. Sylvia, I thought we agreed we weren't bringing any more plants in the house. I know it's a bit cold for some of the species but you can't me that looks like a plant that needs specific care. My dad complained, but an analysis of my memories tells me that what really bothered him was the plants she had tried to get him to keep in the forge as it was usually a lot hotter there. They had that argument when mom pretty much started an indoor garden and a compromise was reached. I didn't bring this one Ajax did. He was playing with it in his room this morning she said indignantly, clearly a little upset about the accusation. I couldn't really fault them for arguing. Both were really stressed with Tom leaving to be a guard so they were both a little on edge. I'll take it back. I was supposed to watch him anyway my brother quickly said taking the plant outside and returning a few seconds later. The rest of the morning continued with both parents fussing over every little thing. Evidently in this world being 10 years of age is the equivalent of college. The children usually take their first step out of basic education on their chosen career path. Some of them still live at home others move to live with their teachers in the shop where they learn but for the most part they stayed in the same place where they lived before a few minutes away from their parents. My brother was doing the equivalent of a full-time study abroad program by leaving to become a guard in the city. Alright, now dad please listen, I know you didn't accept Johnny as an apprentice hoping I'll change my mind. And you'll most likely accept him now so I want to make sure that this practice sword you made for me three years ago is for Ajax. With how much energy he has he will probably start using it as soon as his hands can grip the handle. It served well as my first sword. It would be great for him too. He said, taking one final swing with it before sheathing it, giving it to my dad and attaching his new one to the belt. I will need to pay close attention to where dad puts that blade because I saw a sword skill in my future. I was almost midday by the time the merchant caravan was ready to depart, with my mother trying her hardest to embarrass my brother by being as reluctant to let him out of a hug as the squirrel from Ice Age to let go of the nut I finally saw him get up on the cart and look back with what I think was a bit of uneasiness and trepidation. 
before that changed back to his usual self-assured grin mixed with excitement. I was honestly more upset than I thought I would be, but I guess I was underestimating how much I have come to care for my brother, not to mention that with all the fuss this morning was the first time I learned why they were so reluctant to let him leave to become a guard. Apparently guard is a very special position as you are employed by the kingdom, it doesn't work as usual apprenticeships do. Here you negotiate up front for the whole position, since they always have something to do even for the most useless guards. You negotiate your salary and employment for the next 10 years, at least as an entry-level position. You basically have no option to quit and desertion is not looked well upon, with punishments for doing so ranging from a heavy fine with one year of service left to execution at anything over four years still left. The upside, on the job training from high-skilled people, every day for the first year and as often as you want to attend after that from high skilled people lets you put as much work in your skills as you want as long as you do your assignments a full wage starting while in training something unheard of from many other type of apprentice even if it starts to fall behind what crafters can do when they have nine or ten years of experience it also comes with free meals and shelter in the barracks as well as a full set of equipment every four years the last of which you can keep even if you choose to leave. Once you complete your first 10 years you can negotiate for further employment, your new contract being highly dependent on your performance for the last 10 years. Tom POV. I took one last swing with my sword before I sheathed it, hearing that satisfying chinook and then gave it to my father, before I tied my gift to my belt, knowing this sword was probably much better than anything they would give us as part of the standard set as a guard. Not to mention that with me having a sword I can choose an axe or a hammer or a spear besides the shield meaning I can get the instructors to teach me how to use a shield and sword as well as a shield and something else and do a wheel defense of weapons. After all there were always a few instructors at each barracks surely I could find one that I can get along with and that would train me. Dad assures me that he will not sell my old blade and will keep it for my brother by putting it back in the house. As he is doing that I see Ajax's eyes follow the sword, he has that same look in his eyes as he does every time before I lose track of him and spend the next 10 minutes looking for him. But I let it go and together we head for the caravan. After a long goodbye I climb in the caravan full of smirking faces, knowing that for at least the next few days I will be the entertainment thanks to my mother but I can't hold it against her. I take one last look out towards the village and wonder if I made the right choice, before going back to this strange feeling I had all morning. Well that's not right, not all morning it started right after I took the flower pot back into the garden, I still wonder how Ajax managed to sneak past me after all I don't remember losing track of him once outside the house, not to mention he picked the one plant three times the size of any of the rest of them. That's when it hit me, I knew that plant, I knew it because about two years ago I hid it behind the wardrobe in Ajax's room in an attempt to keep my sister occupied when Ajax was being born, I hid things all around the house and must have forgotten about that one in all the excitement with him being brought home, that X I put on the pot had been staring me right in the face. But how did that plant manage to survive? I know those plants are tough being able to survive two cycles without water or sunlight, but they still need a lot of nutrients to grow while doing so, and I had placed that there years ago growing that big with nobody taking care of it made no sense. Not only that but it looked a lot more vibrant than any of the plants mom had sold in the previous year's so broken bar. Chapter 7 It has been almost three years since I said goodbye to my brother and I find myself in the garden tending to my little pet project. It all started with the silly superstition that X marks the spot, and I was convinced that there had to be a treasure there. Don't judge me, if there is one thing that I figured out throughout all this time being reincarnated is that while my thought process may take advantage of my previous knowledge my body does not, meaning that my emotional reaction was the same as any other child, meaning I was absolutely overexcited and convinced I was right. Surprise surprise I was wrong, I can't say it threw me through a loop because the revelation that the ex was something that my brother did to keep my 5 year old sister occupied while I was being born makes sense. What doesn't is the fact that said not only survived but also thrived. I regret to say that it took me 4 cycles to figure out a reason that had anything to back it up, 
but in my defense my proof was outside and I wasn't really allowed to spend that much time outside until I turned three. My discovery was the vibrant plant life around my window that lost more and more of its shine as it went further and further away, seeing as they were all the same plants and that the wind always beat into my window instead of away from it and that the sun rose from the side meant all the plants were given the same amount of water and sun. Only thing that made sense to me was mana. The further away from the house they were the more diluted the mana I released into the air was, which did make sense seeing as how the plant in the room basically lived off of my mana alone. My new project was a garden, an idea I barely managed to sell to my mom, and its difficulty should not be underestimated as I got a merchant skill just for being able to convince her. Apparently kids should be out playing until they approach the age of 10 with no worries at all in this world. As much as I would like to say that it was my past experiences that led me to make the choice to keep true to my initial plan of raising my stats and skills as my main focus even through the heavy temptations of slacking, it's not really true. I took pretty much every chance I found to do play around. Thing is in a medieval society and stuck in a young body there pretty much was nothing else for me to do. Even the activities kids my age did take part in I found myself trying to use to improve either my stats or my skills. The things that distracted were my sister and her friends. While kids in this world were pretty much layabouts that all changed as being 10 approached, seeing it was like making the change from early middle school to college, they were forced to adapt quickly if they were to survive in life. That mixed with the fact that my only non-running and athleticism skills I could level up were drawing, reading, writing and any other household skills I found myself spending a lot of time with them trying to improve myself, beside mod of course but I still didn't feel comfortable showing that to anyone yet. Gardening was the latest in that list of skills that I found myself practicing, the only difference was after I was basically given a tutorial on how to do it. I started experimenting with releasing my mana right on top of my little spot of the garden 3-4 times a day in my early years and 1-2 times as of late. One thing I can say is that I was having results. These plants were growing 2-3 times faster than any other that were planted. I can't yet tell if it's because the solid I planted them on has been infused with mana over the last 3 years or that they are being given mana as they grow. Maybe it was a mix of the two but I didn't really mind all that much as far as I was concerned this was a success. There was one big change that happened ever since my brother left for Alessis, and that was that Johnny was now my dad's live-in apprentice, meaning I got moved into the same room as my sister and he took my old room. This made it so I got most of my mana practice during the day with little done at night, mostly an end of day meditation and quick release of all that I managed to meditate back. I did not like Johnny at all, in my opinion he was not really someone who was interested in smithing like my father and he mostly decided that smithing was the safest way to become someone important in the village, then used the fact that he was a friend of Tom's to get his apprenticeship. It wasn't so much that he wasn't willing to work, it was that he wasn't willing to try to push himself to improve his skills, instead of taking the trial and error way of doing things over and over to get something right res melting it so it came out just right he would always be begging to just have it spoon fed to him the way to do it despite being repeatedly warned that this would slow down his speed in leveling the skills and lower the amount of experience he got for each creation. Besides that he also hung out with Dirk. The headman's youngest son, they were the same age and where Johnny was lazy Dirk thought the world owed him just because his dad was the village headman. It was a good day when I found out that the headman had an older son he was grooming to become the headman after his passing. All this I learned from Alana, the headman's youngest child and only daughter. Despite being almost a year older than Jenny they got along very well. They both bonded over the fact that they both had wanted to use mana yet neither had been gifted with it. Although Jenny wanted to become a mage and Delana healer. Sam POV, I was starting to get worried. Ajax seemed to be more interested in doing house chores instead of playing with kids his own age. While being able to do chores was good I couldn't help but think that this would not be good for him later on. After all Jenny had grown up with Tom as an older brother and as a result had been a bit tomboyish. Had it not been for the fact that she got along so well with Elena over their mutual misfortune of not having mana I was worried the girls would not have made any friends at all, 
but once Alana took the space left by Tom's departure she seemed to mellow out a bit more. Tomorrow I am going to start teaching Ajax some smithing. He needs to learn how to do something other than housework. Hopefully he is different from Tom and might enjoy crafting. I told Sylvia as we were laying in bed. I won't say I am not worried by his habits but are you sure it's not a bit too early to start with that he is not even six years old yet she answered back in a worried tone yet her soft smile showed that she more or less agreed with my decision and was happy I chose blacksmithing over sword fighting like I did with Tom when he went through the same thing, albeit to a lesser extent using Sylvia as a role model, which led to him going off to become a guard. I had learned from my mistakes I was going to start him off with something nice and safe and go from there. We might just make a smith of this one yet. This thinking about children's future lead me to thinking again about the issue the headman brought up at the last meeting, that our village healer Karen was starting to grow old and with so little work to do here she didn't have the strength to stay for longer than the next six years or so before she would head to the city where her talents could be better monetized. With no children with Mana being born in the village training a new healer didn't seem to be in the cards. The last Mana born child had been invited by the local noble house to visit their home and got an apprenticeship that same trip. She came back home to pick up her family and off they went. Of course I understood why there had been a drastic increase in how far the nobles would go in order to recruit somebody with magic. But I don't think we had yet felt the effect this would have on remote populations such as our little out of the way village. But there was nothing I could do about that. I had better get some rest and focus on starting Ajax's training tomorrow. Chapter 8 Clang, clang, clang. I got used to hearing that sound over the last five cycles. Dad apparently decided that it was time for me to learn something outside of housekeeping and started me off with blacksmithing. I heard that my brother started with swordsmanship but I guess he wanted to steer me more towards the crafting path rather than fighter one. Surprisingly there was a lot more to blacksmithing than I ever thought possible. It wasn't that I underestimated it since I did watch a lot of reality TV back on Earth one of which was forged in fire so I knew a little of what to expect but blacksmithing back on Earth and doing it in this village was a lot different. First of all here we were mostly dependent on mining our own ore and cutting down very specific trees to use for fuel to heat the metal smelting our own ingots and only then could we finally get to hammering our creations into shape. This was also the first time I found myself being bad at something I tried in this world, not in the fact that I didn't unlock the skills for it but simply because I didn't have the strength required. There was a reason that people who had jobs that required physical work only took apprentices only after they had moved past the child trait and were allowed to allocate their stat points. The upside of me being so much weaker and having the skill was that it made the difficulty of actually getting something done that much higher. One thing I understood in these years of messing with my skills is that the harder and more complex the actions take and the quicker they level up your skills. Other than that I also figured out that getting skills to level up got harder with every level and that you could pretty much only do the same thing over and over to level the skills for each 10 level window. Meaning mundane repetitive daily skills got level from 1 to 10 relatively quickly but without any innovation you weren't going to be seeing level 11 unless you put years more work in the same activity. Clang, 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 just a little bit more. I was almost done with this. I was using my dad's detail hammer to get any work done as it was the only one I could swing. Not that the nails I was making took much detail or care to create. As I finished the final nail I felt the skill level up again, even with that not being something all that uncommon for me to level a skill I still felt myself grinning like I always did when my skills leveled up, so I pulled up my stat screen to see the progress I made. Name, Ajax, Level, 10, Experience, 4150 ten thousandths, Traits, Child, Divine Witness, Health, 7070, Mana, 150 210 stamina 4180 vitality 7.22 strength 15.36 endurance 18.9 dexterity 16.7 intellect 33.84 wisdom 25.02 mind 21.73 perception 14.14 stat points 198 skills 
Meditation LVL 32 Sense Mana LVL 31 Expel Mana LVL 31 Mathematics LVL 20 Stealth LVL 13 Drawing LVL 30 Athleticism LVL 31 Running LVL 20 Reading LVL 20 Writing LVL 20 Sprinting LVL 10 Cooking LVL 14 Sewing LVL 10 Cleaning LVL 10 Haggling LVL 2 Gardening LVL 19 Manipulate Mana LVL 6 Water Aspect Mana LVL 5 Fire Aspect Mana LVL 4 Air Aspect Mana LVL 6 Earth Aspect Mana LVL 4 and Inject Mana LVL 3 Mana Farming LVL 2 Axes LVL 14 Hammers LVL 10 Mining LVL 5 Lumberjack LVL 5 Smelting LVL 3 Blacksmithing LVL 3. My stats look like I expected them too. The increase in the difficulty of raising them was definitely non-linear as I barely got any increases outside of my child buff increases intellect and wisdom whereas perception basically doubled, vitality was the odd one out. I hadn't yet managed to find a way to get that one to increase at all. I started with 2 got 5 out of my child trade all I could force was 0.22 and despite it not forcibly increasing I knew the later I got started at doing that the harder it would be. In terms of my mana I guess it came down to experimentation, meditation, sense mana, and expel mana have barely leveled in the last year whereas they got to 30 pretty quick. That's how I figured out repetitive easy activities using skills were definitely not the way to level them more than their share of the 10 levels, the clearest indicator for this being axes. I was using a pickaxe to mine and a normal axe to chop trees letting this one level pass 10 fairly easy while hammers have been there for the past cycle and a half as I kept making nails. Playing around barely summoning a drink of water, helping soften the earth to dig. Cooling myself down with a breeze and lighting a fire with my mana seems to have helped it with getting to 30 but my most recent breakthrough on that front was instead of just expelling the mana near my small patch of garden and hoping it sticks to my plants I could directly inject the mana into them. This came with various levels of success, injecting too much and you would kill the plant so it took some trial and error before I got the hang of it and as I did I got the mana farming skill. This year the plants in my garden were looking better than the ones my mother was growing. The one thing that had me confused was the required experience for level 10, had it followed the pattern so far it should only have cost 8900 instead of 10000 so I was going to be keeping an eye on that to see what else could or would change but maybe it was just a difficulty spike from making it past level 10. Dad the nails are finished I dutifully went to show them to him. I enjoyed blacksmithing and with how much my parents were pushing for me to go more towards the crafter route I most likely would be doing so. Despite this I still kept the amount of skills I had a secret. Not that it was hard since how many people would care about the training a 5 year old would do. And not like it showed in the quality of the nails I made that I had gotten the skills. Not much you can go wrong with there. So I decided to push my luck a little bit and try to get some more information out of my dad about what the norm was in this world. So after my usual evening run I started as we sat down for dinner I went on a fact finding mission. Mom I got a level today I went about bragging hoping this would open the way for me to ask things related without seeming too obvious. As for why I asked after my usual run. Well that was because everybody and their mother in this village had figured out I had a running skill. It wasn't that hard to put together considering the 5 year old doing laps around the village every day. Congratulations Ajax my mom was ecstatic and my dad seemed proud if a little down. Most likely about the fact that I got my level from running and not blacksmithing. Yet he also heaped on the praise. Johnny was taking one of his days off and went to visit his parents and Judy was visiting Alana. The two had gotten along even better after Judy got past her child trade both had discovered at least a bit of an affinity for trading so they were both taking lessons from mom on that front. This meant that it was only me with my parents tonight. What is the usual level for someone my age? My question seems to take the wind out of their sails. Most likely since this is the first time I had brought up leveling and they probably thought I was level 3 at best and didn't want to upset me. Well there is no real set level for kids at your age, as everyone discovers their skills when they get to try out the activity but for the most part, after the child trait ends all kids are level 4, she said with a bit of trepidation clearly not wanting to upset me or lie to me either, 
On average kids are level 5, with the stronger ones being level 6 and the lucky ones who discovered their set of skills early being level 7. Nobels managed to get their kinds to level 8 and in extreme cases level 9 my dad said matter of factly as he went back to eating his food thinking nothing more of my question. OFC course you shouldn't be discouraged by that, you are only 5 you have a lot of time to get your levels he quickly followed it up after receiving a look colder than the arctic from my mother. But I was too preoccupied to listen to the rest of the conversation. I just found out that even the best of the best nobles didn't make it to my level in 10 years and I was only 5, and as happy as this made me, it also made me very paranoid and more convinced of the fact that I should not go around revealing my level or skills to anyone. I didn't want to end up kidnapped or killed over that information. I even felt quite guilty as I got the skill deception for pumping my parents for information. Chapter 9 The plants were more growing better than I ever would have expected and I was experimenting to find out if the input also played a part in how well mana farming would play out by having the same type of plant being infused with my mana to capacity and it being watered by normal water, mana infused water and mana conjured water. I had just finished watering the last plant when I see my sister enter the house, well I say see but it's more exactly here, you won't believe it, she came screaming to mother from 50 feet out getting some of our neighbors to look out their windows to see what all the racket was about. What is it? Mom says to her as I also enter the house to see what could possibly have my sister in such a good mood. What happened that made you come home running and screaming? Mom says clearly a bit annoyed at her. Me and Alana were checking out what old man Craster brought with him this time. When I spotted an odd piece of ore, I asked him what it was and he said he had no idea she rapid fire started in on the story and it was a bit hard to understand every word as she was clearly very excited about it. I don't know why I was attracted to it but I asked him how much he wanted for it. He wanted one silver, but I managed to talk him down to eight large copper coins. This conversation instantly told me that I had a massive gap I should look to get fixed as soon as possible. How does money work here and what are things worth? I can't believe I spent almost 6 years and even started considering a career as a crafter without once considering money. By the look on my mother's face, the news my sister brought didn't excite her as much telling me she was most likely scammed into buying some junk ore. You paid how much for a piece of ore? My mom said in that quiet calm voice of hers that promises the sky will fall on your head. It was barely more than a whisper and yet I knew for sure I could have heard her on the other side of the house as a shiver traveled up my spine. Aye aye it's not like that. My sister defended herself, and stuck to her guns despite being a bit intimidated. I cracked it open and this is what was inside she then pulled out two bright green gems the size of pebbles and my mom's eye instantly shot open. Wow those are real emeralds. I'm sorry sweetheart, though just because it worked out this time doesn't mean that you should be trying to make such risky buys in the future she said quickly reigning in her enthusiasm in order to finish her lecture on impulse spies to my sister. Yes mother I know that but that's not what has me this excited, I got the skill, opportunity sense, right after I finished buying the ore her excitement going right back up to where it was when she entered the house, practically yelling there at the end. My mom went through a series of emotions in about half a second, from confusion to recognition to pride and then to what I could only guess was dread as she instantly moved to cover my sister's mouth with her hand. SHHHHHH, you can't be yelling about things like that her voice is quiet and filled with fear, darling, do you not remember what we talked about when you got your apprentice trait? I told you not to show or tell your skills to others unless you absolutely trust them with your life and here you are screaming you got a rare skill. Are you trying to get yourself taken away? Nobles are always looking for people with rare skills to get into their service, especially now, who else knows you got this skill? Nobody yet, Alana and I separated and when I got it I rushed home to tell you she said while her face turned a little pale as she finally got a grasp on the situation at hand. Good you should make sure it stays that way. As for you Ajax the fact that your sister has a rare skill does not leave this house do you understand me? She said to me in a more serious tone than I ever heard her use. Yes mom, but is her skill something like having mana? I asked trying to get to understand how rare was having mana compared to the gift my sister had. That's hard to say, 
You see darling skills are split into different tiers. There are common skills, uncommon skills, rare, epic, legendary and supposedly mythic skills. The ability to use mana comes in the form of mana sense and expel mana. Both are very rare but they are still uncommon skills whereas your sister has a rare skill she seemed to have calmed down a bit and pulled me over to the table and started giving me a lesson on skills. You see skill tier represent not only how hard they are to get but also how specific they are she said and stopped seeming to think how to explain this to me well you father will tell you this a bit later anyway and it's not like everyone doesn't know it already. So for example let's use your father. He has the common skill hammers and from it he developed the uncommon skills blacksmithing and precise low. You see all attainable skills are for the most part common and uncommon, with a few rumored rare ones. The rest of the skills come from the skills on a previous tier becoming more specified. Sometimes a skill comes from the combination of more than one skill like having blacksmithing as well as sense mana and expel mana would result in mana smithing which is a rare skill. The reason you sister should be careful is because she unlocked a rare skill so young it means she has a good chance to use it to gain an epic skill in her life and nobles want to grab as many user of epic skills as possible. Despite the fact that I have a low leveled rare skill I it's not as important because of the fact that it took me long to barely unlock it. What about legendary and mythic skills? I am euphoric with all this new information I was getting. Legendary skills are kingdom treasures. Not even most of the best in their field in the kingdom are thought to possess one just the geniuses. As for mythic skills they are stories of heroes from the past or tyrants that supposedly had them, and not a single person alive today has one. She said with a far off look, most likely remembering those stories, you see, sweetie, all skills get harder to level as you get them higher and every 10 levels there is a big jump, however something else is used to determine what rank a skill is. If it was just how often it appears since mana would be counted as a rare skill otherwise. You see common skills follow the 10 level difficulty jump increase and that's it. Uncommon skills however have a test. Not much is know about it since it is not openly shared but it's said that every person has a different way of getting the skill to break through to level 75. Rare skills are even more restrictive having tests at level 60 and level 100. Epic skills do so at level 50 and 75. People speculate that 100 as well but nobody has confirmed that, most likely because getting an epic skill to 100 is more a dream than a possible reality. I don't know anything about the legendary tests let alone the mythic one so don't ask, she winds down her lecture, cutting off my questions right as I was about to ask them. Judy is sitting in the chair opposite me her behavior the complete opposite of what it was when this lecture started, then she was fidgety still overcome with energy at her achievement clearly having heard about the classification before but at some point mom must have started explaining something she hadn't heard about yet or something she mustn't have been paying attention to back when she was being taught as now she had a focused look on her face, most likely thinking about what skills she could try to use at the same time to unlock other skills. After all affinity with one skills meant you most likely also had affinity with other skills that linked to it. The only counterexample appearing to be if you have no affinity for another base skill required. Mom, do you have a book that lists known skills and what their tier is? I ask thinking that having some path trees opened up to me would be a good thing so I don't have to discover everything by trial and error. Sadly no. After the last small rebellion 10 years ago the king decided to remove such knowledge from easy access to prevent people grouping up some many skills all under one leader. If you want to find out now about what curtain skill will lead to you have to become an apprentice to someone who has had the skill for a while and knows them. She said looking a little sad I think I'm not the only one interested in getting more skills. This interest in knowledge and creativity that I have, I find that it's not based on who I used to be back on earth. Sure that is a big influence but I can see some of my parents reflected in me. The person I was back on earth. The unlucky lazy person who suddenly woke up died in the tally. I am Ajax, who I was will always be part of me but, in order to thrive in this world I need to let who I was be all in respect to the knowledge I have gained. My emotional and moral decisions will be those of Ajax, raised in this world to Sylvia and Sam, brother to Tom and Judy. 
On this day I made the decision to rise as high as I can not for the sake of who I used to be but for the sake of who I am now, where I am now and for those that are important to me. Chapter 10 For the last few weeks all of our neighbors have been wondering why Judy came running home barely 10 minutes after going to see the caravan. Let me tell you that having them by that it was all because of her finding the two emeralds in an odd piece of ore was a hard sell. But the way Judy sold it I almost believe she either got an acting or deception skill out of it. There were only three people that didn't quite seem to believe it. Alana, Johnny and Dad. Alana might not really believe what she was being told and I can't be sure that Judy didn't come clean to her best friend but from the looks of it either she understood that it was none of her business or their friendship ran very deep from both sides and she does know but has not spread it further even to her own family. Dad I think is sure that something else is going on but he just doesn't know what else and has convinced himself that he actually not knowing is if not better for the family at least it's safer and has left it alone after the talk the night the day it happened. And that left us with Johnny, who was having fishing expeditions so large and so often trying to find out what had happened they could have put fish on the endangered species with that kind of dedication. We mostly dealt with it by playing dumb but I could see that it was starting to grate on both mom and dad that he was being so nosy. The problem was if they asked him to leave on account of this it would be pretty much the same as admitting that something was going on, and he seemed to know that too. This led me to harvesting my little garden a bit earlier than I would have liked, after all this was going to be my pocket money and I wanted to at least be able to put a bit aside for a rainy day, after all. If he was taking a close look at Judy now, with Tom being the best fighter among all the kids his age, how long would it be until he started poking around in my business? So with all my plants collected and ready I went to my mother in the evening knowing I would get a much better result if I was going to talk to her about the worth of what I had and at least gain some understanding of money. I waited until dinner was over and everyone else went to their rooms while I volunteered to help clean up the table. As soon as we were done I pulled mom off to one side, mom, I harvested all my plants today and I would like some advice on how much they are worth so I at least have an idea on what I should sell them for the next time the caravan comes in I ask her. You already harvested but it should still be another cycle until they are ready, I know we agreed that you will be the one to handle your corner but we shouldn't just throw away money like that she says, her experience in growing these herbs for years upon years showing through. I know but I think mine look ready I say as I go to my room and bring out two sacks of herbs and give them to my mother to inspect. She looks at me with pity at first but as she starts pulling out more and more plants her expression changes to confusion then suspicion the outright disbelief as the plants in front of her now are not only decent enough to be harvested but most likely bigger more vibrant and more potent than any she has harvested in the years before. I push down the smirk I feel coming on and listen to her as she finishes going through both sacks. You grew all these in that small little corner I gave you? These are amazing. Just these would probably be worth more than the rest of my garden. She seems both proud and a little conflicted at the fact that her almost six-year-old son managed to do more than her with less. Well first of all I think we should go through how the denominations work. First we have the different metals that make up the coins we use iron copper silver gold and platinum each of them have normal and large coins each large coin is worth 10 of the smaller one and ratch higher metal coin is worth 10 of the large of the previous metal she patiently explains to me placing six different coins on the table in front of me three large and three small pretty much the denominations in this world are each higher value is 10 times the previous one so one large platinum coin is worth 10 platinum coins or 100 large gold coins 1000 gold coins 10,000 large silver coins and so on all the way down to iron coins. Now in a small village like our most buying and selling involves iron coins with some of the more expensive things going into copper. Silver is what is used for family savings as well as for when farmers are selling part of their harvest to the city. Gold and platinum coins are not something we concern ourselves with. Next she runs me through what my plants should be worth about one and half to two large silver coins, after all they are very nice specimens. Next she explained to me that I would probably be able to get one large silver coin for them if I am lucky at the caravan, after all merchants have merchant skills no way they are going to give a six year old a fair price for something. 
Still I think this would be a good experience for you she says with a bit of hurt in her eyes at the fact that she will let me go alone as we agreed all those cycles ago when she let me set up my garden. After that we carefully stored the plants back in the bags and we both went to sleep. I am feeling a lot better and not at all worried about how this sale is going to go now that I know what my product is worth. I don't see why I would accept an inferior price. The next morning was a chilly one, with a thin fog coming down. Nothing that would last for more than another hour or two, so I set about doing my usual mana and physical exercises, replacing the gardening portion with some more mana control until I see it reach as low as 30 in the corner of my vision. The UI is, I think, one of my most useful interactions yet with this system. Yes, it may well have taken quite a bit of focus and willpower to convince myself that I could see my health stamina and mana in the top right corner of my vision like I did in the games back home but it all worked out in the end. While everything in this interface seems to be set in rules, like a message once close cannot be opened again without re-triggering the action that may show up in the first place you can influence the system to work in new favor. For example I can introduce a new command to minimize the message instead of closing it. As I was doing my laps around the village I made out the caravan coming down the road towards the village through the mist, so I decided to go take a quick look at it and maybe eavesdrop a bit, maybe I can get some way to mark up my plants a little bit. Looking out from behind a tree I am surprised to see Tom walking at the front of the caravan towards the village in a decent suit of armor with a big flat shield strapped to his arm. Not being able to make anything else out clearly through the fog I decide to go welcome my big brother home and find out why he is back here. Hey big brother would be ours as far as I get after walking out towards him from behind the tree before I see a flash of movement and feel the ground slip from under my feet. Turns out stealthing close to a guard and suddenly pooping out from behind a tree to talk to them with no warning is a good way to get a shield to the face. I feel myself lying down against the tree, my vision a darkening quickly and a ringing in my ears. Did he just call you big brother? A melodious voice called out. The rest of the commotion was lost to the ringing. The last thing I saw was my health showing 3070. Everything going black and drifting off as I heard Al Zenith. Chapter 11 Tom POV The two weeks trip to the small village open caves did me a lot of good. I was still a little worked up from what had happened but at least most of my anger had bled out and I was only left with a lot of restless energy from just sitting in a cart. Technically I was here for protection so when the fog came in a bit denser I went to the head of the caravan, to lead the way even though I knew the chances of something happening this close to the village were close to zero. All my thoughts changed when I got the distinct feeling that I was being watched. It wasn't something new to me, after all as a guard in the city patrolling the street you always have a few people keeping their eye on you to act as an alarm system for people doing the shady business. The problem was here there was nobody to watch me, everyone was either talking amongst themselves or on watch duty themselves and looking at the forest. I only had this feeling one time before in my life, at the end of my first year as a member of the guard I took the optional posting of joining the hunting guard, you need to have 10 cycles of experience before you can sign up and the money is good for going out into the forest to protect a couple of nobles while they hunt for sport. I still get nightmares from the LVL-19 wolf that jumped on my back that day. That incident is what marked my decision to remain as a normal patrolman and focus on honing my skill through dedication, hard work and time instead of going for the faster method of leveling by putting yourself at risk. After all, Experience earned was a result of three things, first how demanding is the activity, do you have to spend every resource you have or can you keep doing it for days on end with no issues, second how difficult is the activity for you, taking on an evenly matched opponent will give less experience than if you take on that same opponent with no mana or better yet a craftsman making a knife he made a lot of times before levels from his last one. The one he makes after with increased stats will be worth less experience since it was easier to get that result. The last one is risk, and it's pretty self-explanatory the higher the danger the more experience. You fight an opponent in a spar or to the death the experience will reflect that. My small brush with danger made it clear to me I was not built to be able to take the danger, so a steady long road was the way for me. I was now on edge. 
I hadn't taken those assignments before specifically because I didn't want to go through that again and now that feeling of being watched came back. I was looking through the fog but couldn't tell where I was being watched from. All of a sudden something moves from the tree to my left. I hear the crack of a twig and I swing my shield feeling a solid contact. I look at who I hit and I see a young kid that seems strangely familiar. Alzenith Kate says from behind me casting a healing spell on the kid I just flattened. Tom, why would you shield bash a kid who just called you big brother? She asks with a mix of confusion and anger. Then I processed her words. He called me what? I take another look at him and yeah he does resemble Ajax. A profound sense of guilt comes over me as I pick him up and start carrying him towards the village thinking of the best way to explain this to my parents and Ajax himself. Still I swear if this kid doesn't have a stealth skill I'll eat my left boot. Ajax POV, colon. My head was pounding as I started to shift finding myself in my own bed. The last thing I remember is seeing my brother's shield coming towards me and hearing a strange word afterwards. So I tried sitting up, finding surprisingly that while I still had a pounding headache I didn't feel any pain from the actual hit I took and my health now said 70-70. Good you're awake I hear in a soft sweet voice. I look up and I start to consider just how hard my brother hit me. Standing on a chair next to my bed reading a scroll is a blonde young woman with cat ears and tail. I know that beasts can are a part of this world, same as dwarves and elves but knowing something exists and seeing it are two very different things. How are you feeling? Does your head still hurt? She asks while she moves up to check on me. Who are you? Kate, I'm here. That's as far as she got as my mom came in through the door, looking worried and a little out of breath. Ajax. How are you feeling? Does your head hurt? Can you remember what happened? And the questions just kept coming. This has to be the first time I have seen my mother distressed, ever the composed con merchant. This new attitude threw me through a loop. After about a minute of non-stop questions she pauses to take breath so I see my chance. Yes mom I'm fine. I think Tom hit me with his shield I'm not sure what happened after that I quickly threw my brother under the bus. After all I haven't seen him in almost 4 years and the first thing he does is try to brain me. I was just teaching you not to sneak up on someone in a fogged up forest, Tom said from the doorway with his trademark smirk though some concern for me still showed in his eyes. Just kidding he quickly puts up his hands as my mother's attention switches from me and she turns on him. How is he Kate? He gonna make it? Yeah he'll be just fine. So. Why did you take it upon yourself to see if my head is hard enough? I ask my brother, a small smile working its way onto my face. Small hang up from a run in with a wolf in the fog a few years back. You should probably not use your stealth skill within arm reach of me. He tries to brush it off but from the look in his eyes I think it might be a bit more than a small hang incident he makes it out to be. What stealth skill? Mom asks, looking from my brother to me. Confusion clear on her face. Same one he's been using since I was looking after him before I left. I wasn't sure back then if he had one but seeing him get so close to me without anyone in the care of and noticing is a dead giveaway. He calmly digs my grave, completely oblivious to the look of for the love of God shut the fuck up. That Kate catches but only gives me a look of pity as if telling me she can't help. So you've got a stealth skill do you? Mom asks. And I find a sudden interest in inspecting my feet. Is that why I can never find you when I want to deliver something to Mrs. Olena? It's not that I don't want to help you deliver. It's the 30 minute revelation of how I remind her of her son, that she gives me every time I murmur under my breath. Lucky enough she doesn't catch that and seems to have regained her composure. No matter, we can add that to the list of things we need to talk about. Right now dinner's getting cold let's all go eat. She nods towards the door and herds me out after Kate and Tom into the kitchen where Dad and Judy are setting the table for six. It seems that Johnny won't be joining us this time, which I am glad for. The last thing I want is that gossip getting wind of me having a stealth skill. Chapter 12 How is life in the city? Judy went on to question my brother during the meal. It's very different. Going from a village where everyone knows each other to a place filled with strangers that look out mainly for only their own family. It took some adjustment my brother answered. I look forward to seeing the way of life your brother described in the days we'll be staying here. 
Thanks again for welcoming me into your home Kate said as we finished up the food. We had kept the conversation light while eating but now it was time to talk about more serious topics. With everyone having eaten and relaxed it looked to be a pleasant evening. So Tom, what brings you here so soon dad asked the same question that went through my mind the first time I saw him. Well, it all started about three years ago. As the first year finished I took up a shift in the hunting party where a wolf took a mouthful of my forearm. It's then that I met Kate, as she was the medical trainee for our barracks. We had both joined up at the same time yet had never met before and we both grew fond of each other. He explained as he draped his arm across the beeskin's shoulders. Everything went for the next year and a half, up until the point that Baron Nestor's third son took an interest in Kate more specifically her high proficiency with healing magic and tried making a pass at her several times. He clearly doesn't put any stock in the changes implemented eight years ago and was trying to force her into his employ and when we both put up a public resistance he decided to set up an incident, the result of which got us both suspended for one cycle. As suspended guards we can't take any other jobs and we are not provided with the food and shelter for the duration of the suspension and the guard can't give us anything harsher as Kate is one of only two healing requirements in the last three years and the more talented one of them. What happened eight years ago, I ask, everything else in this story makes perfect sense to me, a noble wanted something that was not his, he got told no so he abused his authority and connections to be petty but what was this change really interested me, you see Ajax, you know that we live in the kingdom of Grinder, and the royal family, in an effort to improve relations with the republic, went through an inquisition to ensure all non-human servitude to the noble houses was voluntary, needless to say, Quite a few of them have yet to adapt to the new idea that they can't forcibly collect talented non-human for their houses. This all made sense, after all large parts of the continent were still left unexplored. There were a total of nine independent kingdoms, four where the dominant race heralded supremacy over all others, one with an even mix of all ruled by a council, and four with a majority race and supposed equal rights for the rest. But then how come there isn't a war going on? I couldn't figure out what stopped the supremacy kingdoms from fighting one another constantly. That's easy, they don't want to fight their own kind. Kate said it was the most obvious thing in the world. Why not just attack the others directly? There has to be another way to get there besides going through their own allied kingdoms. There is but nobody is dumb enough to take it. Kate laughed. Honey, us humanoids may be the strongest societal species, but deep in the forests, lakes, mountains or caves separating the kingdoms you can find all sorts of monsters. The mountains keeping dwarves and beeskin from each other have a dragon ruling over them. Mother explained it to me, yeah, maybe they could kill a path through but nobody wants to do it because of how much it will cost in lives to do so only to open the war, as such everything has been at a standstill for the last 500 years. Dad said, at least for now. We are approaching a new rule Kate mentioned offhandedly. What does that mean? I am confused. In the next five years all the monarchies will pass along to the next heir. It happens every 600-900 years depending on how long the current rulers live and how strong they are. Tom lays it out for me. It was very risky for the royal family to make the changes they did so close to a coronation. I hope it doesn't cause a rebellion. On that ominous note everyone else went off to sleep. After all. They hadn't laid in bed for a whole day like me. That night I was thinking of the political situation, especially in the Republic with their Council of Five. You see the Council had a spot for a member of each race that made up a big percent of its population. While all races could interbreed with one another both Dwarven and Elven customs rejected breeding with other races. Not to say that there weren't half Elves and half Dwarves, just that there were very few of them, so the Council always consisted of a human an elf, a dwarf, a beeskin and a half-human half-beeskin. So far there hadn't been any problems with this but this kingdom was still new, less than 800 years old. While that may seem like a lot, it translates to about 1200 years on earth, it still has its interceptors alive. The original members of the factions that came together are still around and some of the strongest people, if not currently in power they still overlook and stomp out corruption. As I wrap my mind around leaders surviving for so long and idealists stomping out corruption, 
I spot my bag of herbs sitting in the corner of the room and remember my original plan for the day, to go sell them, confident that I will have no problem doing it tomorrow, I pull up my stat sheet to see if I got a skill for being laid out, though I suspected I didn't. Name, Ajax, Level, 10, Experience, 4150 ten thousandths, Traits, Child, Divine Witness, Health, 7070, Mana, 210 210, Stamina, 166 180, Vitality, 7.52, Strength, 15.36, Endurance, 18.9, Dexterity, 16.7, Intellect, 33.84, Wisdom, 25.02, Mind, 21.73, Perception, 14.14, Stat Points, 198, Skills, Meditation LVL 32 Cents Mana LVL 31 Expel Mana LVL 31 Mathematics LVL 20, Stealth LVL 13 Drawing LVL 30 Athleticism LVL 13 Running LVL 20 Reading LVL 20 Writing LVL 20 Sprinting LVL 10 Cooking LVL 14 Sewing LVL 10 Cleaning LVL 10 Haggling LVL 2 Gardening LVL 19 Manipulate Mana LVL 6 Water Aspect Mana LVL 5 Fire Aspect Mana LVL 4 Air Aspect Mana LVL 6 Earth Aspect Mana LVL 4 Inject Mana LVL 3 Mana Farming LVL 2 Axes LVL 14 Hammers LVL 10 Mining LVL 5 Lumberjack LVL 5 Smelting LVL 3 Blacksmithing LVL 3. As I suspected nothing had changed a broken bar, until I saw it. My vitality burst from 7.22 to 7.52, losing and regaining that 40 health gave that much of an increase, to be honest I should be kicking myself for not seeing it sooner. After all mine goes up fastest when I spend and regan mana and the same is true for endurance with stamina. Could it also have something to do with the fact that I was healed with a spell? What was that chant she used? Alzenith I'll have to try this out at some point. Having some healing magic on standby isn't the worst idea in the world regardless how harmless living in a village may seem. With a plan starting to take shape in my mind about somehow grilling Kate for all she knows about magic and her remaining time here I fall asleep, perhaps for the first time in five years with a full mana bar just thinking about all that I have ahead of me tomorrow. Chapter 13 I was a bit hyperactive as I made my way to the caravan, Tom and Kate decided to join me, Kate to meet any of my brother's friends that will surely be there and Tom, in his own words, to see me get tripped off. I couldn't understand how that was going to happen since I knew the worth of my goods and even had a haggling skill. I pulled up my screen looking to see if the exercise from last night had worked as I wanted. Name, Ajax, Level, 10, Experience, 4210 thousandths, Traits, Child, Divine Witness, Health, 7070, Mana, 210 210, Stamina, 180 180, Vitality, 7.52, Strength, 15.36, Endurance, 18.9, Dexterity, 16.7, Intellect, 33.84, Wisdom, 25.02, Mind, 21.73, Perception, 14.14, Stat Points, 198, Skills, Common, Mathematics LVL 20, Stealth LVL 13 Drawing LVL 30 Athleticism LVL 14 Running LVL 20 Reading LVL 20 Writing LVL 20 Cooking LVL 14 Sewing LVL 10 Cleaning LVL 10 Haggling LVL 2 Gardening LVL 19 Axes LVL 14 Hammers LVL 10 Deception LVL 1 Uncommon Meditation LVL 32 Cents Mana LVL 31 Expel Mana LVL 31 Sprinting LVL 10 Mining LVL 5 Lumberjack LVL 5 Smelting LVL 3 Blacksmithing LVL 3 Mana Farming LVL 2 Rare Manipulate Mana LVL 6 Water Aspect Mana LVL 5 Fire Aspect Mana LVL 4 Air Aspect Mana LVL 6 Earth Aspect Mana LVL 4 Inject Mana LVL 3. I managed to segregate my skill. This also meant that if anyone got a look at my stats they could make a killing selling the information. 
What has you so worried? Kate asked me. It's not going to be as bad as they said. She tried cheering me up. Thanks. I mumbled maybe you can help take my mind off it. How did you heal me yesterday? Oh that. I just used the healing spell Alzenith she brushed off my question. So anyone with Mana can become a healer? I try a different angle at getting the information out of her. Pretty much. But how effective or efficient your spell is is dependent on your knowledge and experience she finally gives me something to go on. So that's how magic works. I exclaim like I made a breakthrough. Oh no silly. There are three different ways to cast magic, and mages tend to specialize in one of them. It's not that they can't do more but they are counterintuitive to one another. She went into teacher mode. You see casting is done with what we call divine language. No records show we came to know it but casting only works in that language as such getting spells is hard and why apprenticeships are so restrictive. Other than some very basic widely known spells everyone does all they can to keep theirs to themselves. So Alzenith is the healing one? No Alzenith is for small regeneration and a beginner spell. I can't go around disclosing my other ones as the rules of my contract state. Playing around with the divine language is also too dangerous for anyone to attempt outside of wartime desperation. After all one wrong syllable and instead of cleaning the wound you could clean the body of blood. Okay, so messing with casting magic is not something to be done I reinforce that in myself that I will not be playing Russian roulette trying to learn that language. Yeah, Zapspec and Luxem make up the other three widely known spells, healing, cleaning and light. Then there is the runic magic, unlike casted magic this is much more rigid as you need certain conductive materials and patterns to get a specific effect. Humana control doesn't influence anything expect the magnitude of the spell depending on how much mana you put in. They are rigid but it's much safer to experiment with modifying runes though her displeasure at runic magic came through a bit in her tone. Lastly we have control magic, this uses no chant or other items. It is high level mana release and manipulation, while its power output is well below the other two it makes up for it in speed and flexibility, but with the control and deep understanding of the actions you are taking required nobody really uses it. She pauses as if thinking of what else to say. Oh, come on stop boring him with all this magic nonsense he's here to make money my brother oh so helpfully butts in. It takes my full concentration not to swing for his jaw. How am I supposed to ask about magic now without revealing that I have mana? Luckily enough for him we arrive at the market and he darts away to speak to Johnny and Dirk. As they arrive along with us, he takes the initiative to introduce Kate. Not wanting to just hang around as they all catch up I head up to the herb vendor to see what I can get for my hard work. Hey kid, what can I help you with? He asks me with that salesman smile. I am looking to sell these. I say as I lay on the table he is using the bag of herbs. He rifles through the bag and I see his eyes expand to the size of saucers for a brief moment before returning to their disinterested look. And how much would you like for all this? He asks. Now I know about being lowballed so I also will try to highball him. I was thinking around 40 silvers I wanted 25 and would take 20 so that seemed like a good starting point. 40 for these. No kid. How about 10 he instantly goes on the offensive. I open my mouth to reject that but I find I can't speak a word. The only thing that I want to come out of my mouth is to accept the bad offer that was just given to me. It takes me slapping myself across the face to regain my composure and answer. 30 I managed to get out, clearly to the surprise of the vendor. Apparently customers slapping themselves is not a common occurrence but hey if it gets me more money I'll do it. He regains his composure and answers back with a simple 15 the way he looked at me having changed. Try as I might I couldn't manage to do anything other than accept his offer and ended up letting it go for 15 silvers. I took my payment while numbly all day while reflecting back on the interaction, so this is how skills affected non-physical confrontations, I could feel having gained some skills just from that interaction alone. That was the only thing that helped me write off my loss on the sale and got me to move further in the market looking to try my hand at now lowering the price others set on their wares. Where'd you go little brother? Tom caught up to me, joined by Kate Dirk and Johnny, 
manage to sell my plants, I tell him, really how much did you manage to get for them, 15 silver coins I answer dejectedly, 15, mom only comes back with around 25 and she usually sells double what you bright he exclaims, yeah but she said what I had was worth around 20, maybe 25 when she looked at them 2 days ago. In my focus at getting to the bottom of merchant skills I let that crucial bit of information just slip out. And where did you get plants like that? Dirk asked, while Johnny looked at me with gred in his eyes. I transplanted them from the forest and have been taking care of them for a year now I quickly lied that I grew them from scratch and am hoping my deception skill will swing things in my favor. They seem to have bought it but as of late more and more of these slip ups are happening. I need to start being more careful of who is around me when I run my mouth. Well what's done is done. All that's left is for me to go spend my newly earned cash. When a cart filled with seeds catches my eye. Hey sir. What kind of seeds are these? I ask the merchant. I have different kinds of seeds. Food medicinal. Even some poisonous ones he answers before he turns around and sees who he's dealing with. Dotto. What can I help you with kid? I was looking to buy some medicinal plants that would sell well and try planting them I think honesty might be my best bet here and closing down a deal while he is flustered about selling poison to a child would work in my favor. Sure these ones here are quite rare and they sell well but they are very hard to grow. I would rather recommend these other ones he shows me his wares. How much would it be for a bag of the first ones? I could let it go for 5 silver coins he says as I feel the same pressure settle on me once again, though much weaker than before, is it because of my own skill improvement or maybe his skills aren't as high, most likely both. I'll give you 3 he answered back, his expression becoming more rigid, clearly he feels my own skills taking effect, 4 is all I hear back and the pressure mounts considerably, it takes every ounce of willpower I have to squeak out a 3 and half. His composure breaks out into a smile and through his laughter I hear ha ha ha, I like you kid, all right three and a half it is. The rest of my trip though the merchandise I do nothing but question the price and try to work out my skills on things I can't afford as such getting my skills a workout and not being able to buy things from lack of funds. Chapter 14 Spending a whole day bartering and losing did a lot in terms of bringing me down from my high horse about being special. While yes I was an extreme talent in terms of children, if the skills of common merchants that through these parts is enough to stifle me like that I clearly need to get a lot stronger considering that there are people who count their age in centuries not decades. The idea for tonight was to question my brother as well as my father in order to help me determine what kind of path I wanted to pursue. Out of the gate one is a runic mage or caster mage was out of the question. It would get me noticed way too quickly and end up with me forced to accept a lifetime contract, that gave me options as any other type of crafter or fighter, even as a farmer should I want to considering I could downplay my mana farming skill. So after dinner, while mother and Judy were out with Kate I went in to start planning my future. Hey brother, I was wondering what being a guard is like. He looked up from his drink at my question with an intrigued look on his face while dad just about choked on his. WWH where is this coming from Ajax? Dad is starting to look panicked that I might follow in my brother's footsteps. Yeah little brother, didn't you already start your training in blacksmithing? He smirks at me knowing that he was the reason I started off with blacksmithing as opposed to swordsmanship. It's just that after spending a day selling and buying things at the fair I thought about what job I might do in the future. As much as like blacksmithing it isn't something that I can see myself doing for the rest of my life I answer, all the while looking at my father as if to convey to him that as much as he might want me to follow in his footsteps it isn't going to happen. You don't really need to be so worried about that, with skills and drawing running and stealth you can always become a messenger, and those are always needed brother seems to think that this is a great future and while I understand the importance of a timely delivered message in times of crisis, even thinking about being a career errand boy sends a shiver up my spine. Dirk even told me that his dad was relieved today when he told him about your stealth skills since this village didn't have a messenger to send should something happen he blindsides me with something that I am very surprised to hear, where the hell did they learn about my stealth skill? 
How do they know about my stealth skill? I hadn't told anyone about that until today. I thought the ability to read another person's status was extremely rare. I am downright panicked at this. Do they know about all my skills? Tom POV, Ajax freaks out when he hears about the opportunity to have a calm peaceful life with a guaranteed job and few responsibilities. I instantly start feeling very guilty about having leaked out his skill to both Johnny and Dirk. At the time it didn't seem that big of a deal. N.O.T. they don't. I may have let it slip out that you have it a broken bar my voice runs out of volume towards the end of my sentence. I see a look of relief instantly take over him, morphing an instant later into one of rage, that just as quickly turns into something that seems like the mask of focus our strategy instructors get on their faces when they play each other in those weird strategy games, and ends up with a look that all but screams he has a plan in mind, and from the way he is eyeing me, I think it doesn't bode well. BB but I don't want to be a messenger. His eyes start getting wet and it feels like a dagger to my heart for having ruined his future. I'm sorry Ajax, is there any way I can make it up to you? I try to placate him before he may burst out crying. I'll end up sleeping in the forest if mom and Kate come back to find him crying because of me. I catch the small smirk that flash on his face before he looks up at me. All signs of it gone his face a picture of innocence really. You'll help train me in all the weapons you learned to use while being away? Maybe if I get a skill in one of those it will make it easier for me to pick a different career. And there's the ploy. He basically signed me up as a full-time instructor for a full two weeks. The question is how do I get out of this without causing a shitstorm to fall on my head afterwards? Right as I figure my way out and open my mouth to answer, I see it in his eyes he knows I have my ticket out the door opens and in walks mother. Judy and Kate, I see him through a look at the door before he beats me by saying you won't do it, do what? Kate asks as she comes to take a seat by my side, after he told D that's as far as I let him get out before I quickly cut him off, the little brat he was ready to throw me in front of the cart, yes I might have done the same to him, but mine was an honest mistake, we were supposed to be brothers, of course I'll do it, Kate POV, Spending the afternoon being given a tour of the village by Sylvia and Judy was a lot more enjoyable than I would have thought, after being raised in a city to a poor single mother I was so shocked to see how strong the bonds between these people were all the way out here in the forest, despite not being family they all knew and helped each other without looking for an angle, having returned home I find my lover with a defeated look on his face and his brother Ajax with the same one he had as he was leaving the market despite not being able to buy anything after that bag of seeds. Everything okay? I ask him after we retreat to our room for the evening. Yeah, it's all fine, I may have spilled about Ajax's stealth skill without asking him about it and he has me training him in everything I know about weapons until we leave, sorry I won't be able to take you to see caves this village was named after. He tells me, it's not a big loss, I don't find caves that interesting in the first place so spending more time connecting to what could turn out to be my only family in the future. Seeing how my mother died two years ago was a much better way of spending my time, especially since I found myself feeling welcomed and liking these people. Don't look so down, come here I'll make it up to you I call to him in a sultry voice from the bed as I pull aside the blanket. Sam POV, I can hear some suspicious sounds as I pass Tom's room and call it a night as I get into bed. Is everything okay? Sylvia looks at me concerned. My folly till the section 8 of being indifferent to Ajax not continuing as a blacksmith must have fallen, I'll be okay, it's just that Ajax has decided not to become a blacksmith, he even roped Tom into training him how to fight, all because he doesn't want to be a messenger, I let out a sigh at how powerless I feel, if he just doesn't want to be a messenger I could try talking the rest of the crafters in the village into trying him out as an apprentice before he turns 10. Lord knows they all owe me a favor or two from all the times they had me help them out with selling their wares after a dry spell in their income she comforts me with an idea I hadn't even considered. She's right, just because Ajax won't become a blacksmith that doesn't mean that he won't be a crafter there are many professions that he could take up. My mood instantly perks up as we cuddle to go to sleep. What would I do without you? I murmured before I fell asleep.